Hey gamers, welcome back to Hotfix, your daily dose of gaming news. As you can probably tell, I'm back from PAX finally, and the show is going to be resuming its regular schedule of every Tuesday to Friday, which is awesome to hear. Also, at some point this week, I'm going to be finding the time to be doing a Hotfix Rewind on my experience at PAX, talking about the games that I saw there, the merch I got, and just my favorite experiences. But yesterday was March 13th, 2017, and let's get right into it. First off, in what is likely a response to Xbox's Game Pass that they revealed the other week, Sony has announced that PlayStation 4 games are now coming to PlayStation Now. Sony has definitely been trying to push it lately by dropping it from all devices except for the PS4 and the PC. While we're still unsure of what games are going to be coming to it, it's really cool to see that PlayStation 4 games are going to be there because this is now going to be much greater value for those who subscribe to it and those who want to get those PS4 games can now see the value in PS Now. Even those who don't have a PlayStation 4 like myself that can subscribe to PlayStation now and just play these games on my PC. That's pretty fucking dope. Now Sony just has to fix the streaming problem that people have been having because streaming a game can be kind of unreliable. That's also due to people's internet connections. This is a whole host of reasons that people will find issues, but hopefully they get that worked out. It seems like it could be a great service with great value to all PlayStation 4 users and even Windows PC gamers. Reviews for Tom Clancy's Ghost Recon Wildlands came out yesterday and it came out to good to above average reviews. The game isn't incredible and I don't think anyone really expected it to be. From what I've been hearing, it's a really fun game to play with your friends, but when you're alone it kind of drags on and even with your friends it eventually starts to drag on and show its inconsistencies and its lack of depth. But I don't know, I watched some gameplay on it and it looked pretty fun to me, but maybe that's just because I haven't played like an open world third person shooter in such a long time. So this may be the type of game for those who are just looking for something to get through the month before Mass Effect or something like that. Definitely not a bad game, but it's not an amazing game either. Resident Evil Revelations is actually coming to the PlayStation 4 and Xbox One this year. The game originally came out on the 3DS and people really, really liked the game. Unlike Resident Evil 6, the game was kind of a throwback to the old horror staples that made Resident Evil what it is today. It eventually got remastered for the PS3, Xbox 360, and PC in 2013. But since they recently ported Resident Evil 4, 5, and 6 to this next-gen consoles and that has proven to be very successful, they're going to be doing the same with Resident Evil Revelations. While we don't have an official date yet, we know it's coming out this year and they're releasing it both digitally and physically, which is pretty cool. Wow, 2017 is proving to be a great year for Resident Evil fans. Yesterday also brought us another character reveal for Injustice 2. Hero Firestorm is the newest character added to the lineup. According to the footage, Firestorm seems to be a zoning heavy character with a fast projectile and a move that sends him flying from one end of the stage to the other. His special ability is a three stage buff, which when fully charged will cause the flames enveloping his body to run blue and amplify his damage. Cool, I've been talking with some of my coworkers over at the Coalition who are really, really into the Injustice games, and they were saying that Injustice 2 seems to be bringing in a lot of these unknown characters and introducing them to everyone, and that's really cool to see. Firestorm seems to be one of those characters. I've never heard of them. Granted, I'm not super into comics as much as I wish I was. This is an entryway for people like me to get introduced to these new characters. Good shit. The Final Fantasy XII remaster, The Zodiac Age, is getting a collector's edition. There is also a limited edition coming, which just like Final Fantasy XV's limited edition, the game comes with a steelbook case and then some some codes to unlock some cool extra stuff that won't benefit you too much, but it's just nice to have. But the collector's edition is going to be coming with that steelbook as well, though with different box art, a DLC code, a set of six art cards featuring characters from the game, a selection of soundtrack music, and a set of mini busts. The busts display the visages of five of Final Fantasy XII's intimidating judges and are exclusive to the collector's edition. They will not be sold separately. Both the standard and limited edition of this game will be $50, however the collector's edition will be $200. $100 and gamers can pre-order it now. The game is launching on July 11th for PlayStation 4. Wow, that's awesome. All of these old franchises are just becoming successful again, like Resident Evil, Final Fantasy XV. All of the newest versions of these games have been doing so well, and that's just awesome to see. So the Switch has been doing super well, better than most of us anticipated, and that's really nice to see because Mario Kart 8 is getting ported over to the Switch with new features. Entitled Mario Kart 8 Deluxe Edition, the game is going to be coming with all of the Wii U versions DLC, including Link and the Mercedes-Benz cars. It will also be coming with five new racers, 
characters, bringing the total number of characters to 42. Holy shit. It's going to be getting a revamped battle mode that's going to be kind of a throwback to the old battle modes in the previous Mario Kart games, which fans wanted. And there are also a few quality of life improvements, such as a smart steering control setting that will keep less experienced players from constantly falling out of bounds. Characters will be able to carry two items instead of one. Ooh, like double dash. Also, when the game is being played in the docked mode with the Switch, it will be running in 1080p, which is awesome. The game is launching soon on April 28th for 60 bucks, and a new Joy-Con wheel accessory will launch alongside it for $15, which will allow players to hold the Joy-Con controllers like a car's steering wheel, which is pretty cool. Man, I really wanted the Switch to be successful, and it seems like that's going to be the case here. People are loving the console. I actually got to try it out at PAX, so make sure to look out for that video later on. Rocket League is getting a new mode launching on March 22nd, the day after Mass Effect Andromeda. It's going to be called Drop Shot, and it's going to be removing standard goals, instead having players score by breaking panels in their opponent's floor and then dropping the electrified ball in. The first time the ball hits a panel, it activates it and the second time breaks it. The ball is also getting stronger depending on how many times it gets hit, enabling it to damage up to 19 panels at once. Of course, with the update, we're also going to be getting a speed-themed Turbo Crate, the fourth competitive season, new arenas, and more. Also, if that description of the game mode wasn't very clear, don't worry, it wasn't very clear to me either. You guys are gonna wanna watch the trailer that introduces this game mode and then you'll be able to see everything that's going on. The trailer clears everything up and it makes a lot more sense. The new game mode looks awesome. I don't know when I'm gonna be able to play it though because Mass Effect. What's great though, like all Rocket League's DLC, it's free. And lastly, the theme park game Planet Coaster is getting a new free spring update. The update is coming with three new roller coasters, a new tracked ride, three new flat rides and a new feature involving crime and security. So of course those who play the game are gonna know what I'm talking about and those are the ones who are gonna be excited for this update. Someone who has never played the game, I don't know what any of that means, but those who are interested can come check out the details themselves. The update is coming April 11th. Well folks, that's about it for yesterday's news. Make sure to like the video if this recap helped you. Leave your thoughts in the comments below on these news stories. Be sure to hit that subscribe button for free daily news updates straight to your inbox every Tuesday to Friday and be sure to constantly be checking the coalition out for the next few weeks because all of our PAX content is going up and there are going to be a ton of new games for you to check out that we're going to be following, reviewing, and previewing. Thanks for watching and as always, I will see you guys tomorrow.